Hello, Accelerated Math 7-8 students. We are working in Module 14, and this is Lesson 6. Lesson 6 is called Solutions of a Linear Equation. Solutions of a Linear Equation. All right. Solutions of a Linear Equation. The goal for today. Today we will use the distributive property to help solve equations. Um, the question that I want you to be thinking about is, what do you have to remember about the distributive property to make it work? Um, the thing that usually trips up every kid with working with the distributive property is they forget that there are two terms inside the um, quantity. And the other thing that you have to remember is that inside the quantity, um, is not multiplication, it is always adding or subtracting in order for it to be a true distributive property. And what I'm talking about inside here is that the only time distributive property actually works is if you are adding or subtracting inside. So that makes it the distributive property because you're taking one term and you're adding it to another term and you have to distribute the outside amount. Okay. All right, so thinking of that, the first activity that I want you to do is you have to decide which of these are correct, okay? So this um, equation is saying that 2x plus 6x is equal to 2 plus 6 times x, okay? So there are a couple of different ways that you could prove it, is you could follow um, the rules of order of operations and the rules of order of operations tell you that you have to do inside the parentheses first. So if we take a look at this, we have 2x plus 6x is equal to, inside the parentheses first is 8, and then you multiply that by x. And when you do that, these are 2x's, this is 6x's, so I really have 8x on that side, and then 8 times x is, there are 8x's, so this would be Okay, that's one way to solve it. The other way to solve it, if you're looking for another way, is to solve it this way, where you have 2x plus 6x is equal to, and then distribute the x to each term, so x times 2 gives me 2x, and x times 6 gives me 6x, and then you can see I have 2x plus 6x equals 2x plus 6x, so those show that it's true also. So you can do it either way to come up with determining whether it's true or false. Okay. All right, so let's try the next one. We're going to try it both ways. Only problem here is, can you combine x and 4? So on this one, you cannot combine x and 4 because we don't know what x is. So we actually cannot do the parentheses first because we don't know what x is, so we're going to have to go straight into distributing. So this means that I have x plus 4, x plus 4, x plus 4. So I have x plus 4 three times. So if I have x plus 4, x plus 4, and x plus 4, how many x's do you see? You see three of them. How many 4's do you see? Three of them. So what is the value of three 4's? 12. Okay, so that's what I get on this side. And then on this side, we have 3x plus 12. So is it true? And the answer on this one would be true. There isn't any other way that you can prove it because the x happened to be inside the parentheses as part of the quantity, and so we can't solve it any other way. That's the only way that we can prove it, okay? All right, so let's look at the next one. 7y plus 1 is equal to 7 times the quantity y plus 1. So again, this one is very much like the one above because this is a variable. You don't know what it is, so you can't combine them. So on this one, we have 7y plus 1 on the left-hand side, and then we have y plus 1 seven times. Well, if you have y plus 1 and that happens seven times, how many y's do you have? Seven. And then if you have seven ones, how much is that? Seven. And so are these the same? Wow, look at that. That's kind of tricky. 7y plus 1 is equal to 7y plus 7. What did you find out about this one? This is not true. And the way we proved it is the 7y's are the same, but is the constant the same? Nope, this is a 1 and this is a 7. So this is false. Okay. 
So kiddos, you need to make sure you're attending to precision and you're going slow because just like on this one, I thought we were good to go until we got to the end and we realized that seven ones added up together does not make one, it makes seven. So you need to go slow and make sure that you are correct when you're checking it. Okay, so let's look at the next two. I'm actually going to have you do the next two on your own, see what you come up with. Okay, you have to decide, are they true or false, showing your work on each way. All right. Okay, the last thing that we're going to do, because remember our goal for today, today we will use distributive property to help us solve equations. Let's go down to the very bottom. And as you can see, we've got a lot going on in this one. It says, try this, solve for the variable. We have 4x plus 3 times the quantity 4x plus 7 equals 4 times the quantity of 7x plus 3 minus 3. Oh, good grief is what I have to say. So, we know that we have 4x's over here, plus, then we have 4x plus 7 three times. So we have 4x plus 7, 4x plus 7, and 4x plus 7 three times, because that's what that means. And then all of that is supposed to equal four groups of 7 plus, 7x plus 3, 7x plus 3, 7x plus 3, 7x plus 3, because it's four of them. And then we have to subtract off 3 when we're all done. Okay, so now if we're looking at this, our next step is we're supposed to combine like terms. Okay, well, we have 4x here, which is an x. We have 4x here, 4x here, and 4x here. So I'm saying that those are your like terms. So 4, 8, 12, 16. So now I know that I have 16 x's, right, because we're adding all of those together. And then 7 plus 7 plus 7 is 21. So now I have 16x equals 21. And what would it be on this side? I have 7x is here, 7x is here, 7x is here, 7x is here, which is 28x's, right? 28x's plus, well, look, this is a negative 3 over here, and this is a positive 3. So what are they going to create? A zero pair, right? And then I have 3 plus 3 plus 3. 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 3 is 9, so I actually have plus 9. Okay, that wasn't so horrible. And now I have to get all of my x's on the same side. So if I make these negative x's to do a zero pair, then these are going to be negative x's, and then I'm going to have negative x's. Bleh. So I'm going to move these guys over here, creating, um, Subtracting off the 16 x's, which makes a zero pair, what you do to one side, you have to do to the other to keep it balanced. So I'm left with 21 over here, and then if I had 28 and I take 16 of them away, then I'm left with 12, right, x's plus 9. Well, now that's pretty simple because I know the BU chart, so I'm going to do a BU chart over here off of the side. My variable is x. The first thing I did was I multiplied it by 12, then I added 9 to it. So now I have to subtract 9, divide by 12, and I'm left with x. So I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides to keep it balanced, because that's the rule. 0 pair, 12x on this side, 21 minus 9 is 12. 12 divided by 12 is 1. So I know that x is equal to 1. Okay, so let's plug that back in and see if we're right. Everywhere you see an x, it's going to be a 1. Okay, so this is kind of fun. Guess what? This is algebra, kids. Um, so let's look at it over here. Every time we see an x, it's, in a one. it's a 1. So we have 4 times 1 plus 3 times the quantity, 4 times 1 plus 7, quantity, equals 4 times the quantity, 7 times 1 plus 3 and then subtract 3. Okay, well that's not too hard because now we're going to do order of operations. So, 4 times parentheses is 4, plus inside the parentheses first, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 7 is 11. So now we have 11 times 3 equals 7 times 1 is 7, plus 3 is 10, so we have 4 times 10, and then we're subtracting 3. Okay, so far so good. Parentheses first, so we have 4 plus 33, it's supposed to be equal to 40 minus 3. Well, 4 plus 33 is 37, and 40 minus 3 is 37, and ta-da! You found it.
they are equal. Okay, so the value of x for this problem has to be 1, and it checks out when we plug it in and do all that work. Okay, all right, so your job is to check those two as being correct. Go back to our goal for today. Today we will use the distributive property to help solve equations. We did that. Um, what do you have to remember about the distributive property to make it work? You have to remember to distribute the quantity to both terms. Both terms. That's why this one is wrong because whoever wrote this one forgot that you had to take the 7 is saying that I have 7 y's and I have 7 1's. Okay, so remember there are two terms inside there. The other thing you have to remember for it to be distributive property is that the sign inside the quantity has to be adding or subtracting. Those are the only two that make it the distributive property. Okay, all right, and that's all I have for you today. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.